What is up YouTube? I'm the nice one and today I got another character modeling video for you. Yay! This time we're finally making that D&D paladin I keep talking about and I'm super excited because paladins are my all-time favorite class in 5e. We're building the model in Autodesk Maya and then taking it to Blender for some rigging and texture painting. So if you're ready to smite down some evil, sit back, relax, and let me make the mistakes for you. So, low poly character modeling in Maya. I can say that making a transition between Blender and Maya might seem a little intimidating, but it's actually not too bad at all because a lot of the basic concepts apply to both programs and frankly, all modeling software. Stuff like the importance of symmetry, retopologizing, subdivision surfaces, end guns, normals, boolean cuts. You see those tools and techniques across the board in modeling software. So the learning curve is just about becoming familiar with the UI and the shortcuts. But moving on to this paladin. I went really try hard on this character because frankly, I love playing paladins in 5e and obviously you want your character to look epic. This time though, I actually approached building the character a little bit differently. Instead of building the armor and the accessories directly into the model, I'm creating a generic humanoid figure first, and then I'll layer the clothing, the armor, the weapons, the accessories on top, so they act like actual objects on a character. To do this, I'm using my typical box modeling approach with symmetry on the X to be a little more efficient. Obviously, I'm starting with a cube primitive and then extruding and scaling out from there to build the form. I'll begin by shaping out a cylindrical body, adding a few loop cuts, and then edge sliding the loops into the correct position. Then I'll move on to the legs, the arms, the hands, and the head for last, and I'll combine it all either using a boolean combined or just a regular combined function. Something I really like about Maya is the smooth preview function, where you can preview exactly how your model will look once you do subdivide the faces. You can still achieve this in Blender using the subdivision surface modifier, but something about Maya's smooth preview just seems a little more fluid. Another great feature Maya has is a global menu, which is accessible using the spacebar. You can pretty much access any tool Maya has to offer just by holding down space and navigating the global menu. This is great if you're not too familiar with shortcuts just yet, or you're just trying to figure out where each tool is kept. Once I finished modeling out the generic figure, I began creating the armor pieces to layer on top. For armor pieces, my approach is a little bit different than when I'm creating the humanoid figure. Instead of box modeling, I use a generic plane and I'll create the outer face of the armor piece first, and then I'll extrude using the thickness function to fill out the form. Now you can either boolean cut these things together, but instead I left the different armor pieces overlapping with the generic human figure because I was planning on weight painting the entire thing anyways and keeping the model and the armor together lets me swap out the pieces to create a library of assets and just a bunch of different characters on the fly. Now once I finished out modeling out the character, I actually rigged it in Blender and instead of using a shader map, I hand painted the texture using Blender's texture painting tool. To be honest, the hand painted texture look has become one of my personal favorites because it adds a bit of personality to the finish and just a little more creativity and you have a lot more control on where you want details to be. You just need to understand how lighting and shading works in order to kind of fake those layers when it comes to making armor. Something I struggled with and frankly still haven't gotten pat down just yet is weight painting the skirt. Weight painting limbs is pretty easy because you can clearly tell which part of the model corresponds with which armature bone. But when it comes to overlapping clothing, it's a little more difficult because you want to achieve that nice deform when your character moves. And that means getting a gradient between the weight paint hotspots closest to the right limb and then gradiating out so that the influence becomes less and less. It's a little bit finicky because sometimes you might accidentally add like a 0.5 influence at a random vertex. And then when your character moves, the vertex deforms giving you some crazy unexpected results. But all you gotta do is take your time, isolate the vertices that you want to be weight painting as much as possible so that your weight paint is as accurate as it can be. But yeah, that's pretty much my way of character modeling in Maya. Maybe I'll come out with another proper step-by-step -step tutorial if you're interested, but if you have any questions on how I created this paladin, feel free to drop a comment below or tell me about something you're struggling with and I'll try my best to help you out. Keep an eye out for that animated web series that I'm working on because I think you'll see some of these characters make a reappearance. But until then, I'll let the time lapse play me out. And as usual, I hope you liked the video. I'll talk to you later. Have a nice night.